Hello and thanks for rejoining us. Here's hoping video is actually working this time. I'm having terrible luck with YouTube over the past few days. It's been really unfortunate. And so uh, we had been trying Twitch, but it looked like people were having some trouble finding us over there. So we're back on YouTube, even though it seems to keep crapping out in terms of video, and then we have to restart it again. So uh, going off stage right now are the chunchachas. The little wild girls. And uh, uh oh, we've got an ambulance headed out of town from Kiyabamba, from down in the jungle. So, this is a, an ambulance from far away. This is the only route through. It's the only route through for that ambulance from down in the jungle. And uh, so, they're taking a, a sick or injured person via the only route, desde Kiyabamba. So that is a long haul. So everybody moved out to let the ambulance through. So now we're gonna see the next dance up. We have seen three dances so far out of 20. So. so now we're gonna see the next dance. And this is a, uh, this is a, a very interesting one. the Majeños, and uh, they are the colonizer drinkers, the boozing colonizers. Thanks for watching. Uh, where are you watching from? Let us know where you're watching from so I can give you a shout out. We already have had San Francisco, California, USA and Dodge, Wisconsin, USA. Um, so yeah, so this is an interesting troupe. Like I say, these are the colonizing, flag-waving, hard drinkers, right? Um, So they're another sort of troublemaking crew. And they are dance number four out of 20. So yeah, let us know where you're watching from. And uh, also if you have questions, just go ahead and type them in the chat and I'll answer. Washington State, USA. Hello, thanks for joining us. So under normal circumstances, in a normal festival year, uh, which this is not, uh, everything is still being carefully monitored and they're still trying to kind of keep activities down a little bit. Um, in a normal year, all of these dance troops are dancing all around town all the time. And so uh, people are partying in the streets and dancing in the streets. And, um, and there's a whole lot of interaction that happens between the dancers and people who are watching. 
and that is mostly probably not going to happen this year because uh, this is the first year since 2019 that Señor de Choquequilca has actually been celebrated. Uh, it couldn't happen in 2020, it couldn't happen in 2021, and they just got clearance really recently, like about a month ago, to do it this year uh, based on the fact that there have been no deaths from COVID in the Cusco area since April, early April. So we're all very hopeful that that will continue to be the case. Um, Cusco has a pretty good vaccination rate. Um, it's giving fourth doses of vaccine to everybody 50 and up, and everybody 18 and up is supposed to have three doses by now. And um, and they're working on that same that same number for everybody who is sort of age five and up, so school age and up, and school is just starting back up in person after two years of being virtual. More than two years, really. So you can see these majeños are drinking as they go around and do their dance. So their interaction with the crowds would be to find somebody who's really drunk in the crowd and uh, try and get them to join in the dance. Excellent question. Does each group have their own set of musicians? The answer is yes. Uh, the band is specific to each dance group and uh, plays specific music that goes with each dance group. You can see now he's spraying beer around the crowd. They're all spraying beer around the crowd. You can see that a lot of people were prepared for this and have umbrellas. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so if you weren't beer soaked before the Mahenos came on scene, you are now, so you may as well get to serious partying. Um, yes, every, <laughs> every dance group has its own band, and then there are also bands that play popular dancing music uh, at the houses of the people who have cargos, who have the charge for making all of this happen. And they are throwing candy and goodies and treats out into the crowd now too. Thank you. 
ahí. We're trying to figure out who's coming up next. Because we don't see somebody obviously on deck. I don't know, whoever's dance number five must be late coming back from getting lunch in after the morning and early afternoon processions. So, I don't know, these majinos might have to keep dancing. Up here we have the Tusu Huarmi or dancing women. Uh, these are a very, uh, so for those who were interested in the whipping earlier, uh, you're going to see more of it from the Tusu Huarmi who are coming up on deck here. Uh, and this band also, their band, which plays a number of festivals, has some really good stunts like, uh, like we've watched them throw one drummer in the air and then have him standing on people's shoulders. And anyway, so there's a lot of stunt action coming up. A lot of stunt action coming up. And they are here just in time. So the Majinos are going to finish up their dance and then the Tusu Huarmi will take the stage. They were studying Ai, no? So, yep, yeah, so you can see the Tusu Huarmi, the dancing women, lining up and getting ready. Tusu means dancing, that they are dancing, uh, and uh, Warmi is woman. So, the 
dancing women are coming up. So yeah, everybody's got to go take beer to the uh, houses. Well, so are there more people in a dance group than observers not in a group? Right now, yeah, for the most part, this is, uh, for the most part, people are not just coming out to watch dancing on the plaza because we're just coming out of really very strict uh, COVID measures, right? So uh, for the most part, people are still a little bit hesitant to just go be in a crowd in public. Uh, so for the most part, everybody who's watching is somebody who has family who's in a dance troupe, and I guess we are no exception. Uh, Marta has two sisters and a cousin in one dance group, and her son is in another. And uh, her brother-in-law is the leader of that dance group, and we all know people in every single one of these dance groups. But uh, but yeah, it's really this is really important in, from the perspective of being the first chance everybody has had to celebrate the patron saint in three years. The last time this party was had, the last time this fiesta was done, was 2019. So, under normal circumstances, in a normal year, this plaza is so full, you can't move edgewise through the crowd. Uh, but, uh, this year, it's, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit lean. So most of the people that we see circulating through are going to the houses of Carguyo, right? They're going where the cargo is, which is where the real party is, um, but it's more uh, enclosed, right? So uh, so every, every one of the people who has a, the, the cargo charge or responsibility for dressing and feeding and hiring a band for the dancers and doing all of that kind of stuff at their house has a whole party going on pretty much uh, round the clock for four days and then they're going to do it again for a couple of days for the uh, for the eighth day uh, repeat, which is a standard tradition here. Um, anyway, uh, so that's where a lot of folks are heading with cases of beer and food that's going to get cooked and all of that kind of stuff because it's going to be feasting and drinking and dancing and lots of music for four days straight. It started yesterday and today is the central day and then there's tomorrow and Tuesday still for all of these dancers doing their thing all over Ollantaytambo. And uh, it used to be, like in a normal non-pandemic time, all of these dances would be circula circulating through the entire town pretty much all the time, right? So this is going on round the clock, round the clock. Like don't even think about sleeping. You know, if you're gonna take a nap, it's probably because you're so drunk you, you have to and you can't help it. No, um, but seriously though, uh, um, this is a very subdued fiesta this year, but it's super important that it is finally able to happen. So there's a lady with her baby. She is not in a costume. That's her regular clothes. Other lady going the other way with the kid following behind her. Same, regular clothes. So 
So this is the Mahenya theme music. You hear this music and you know the Mahenyas are coming. So like if you're at home and you're inside and in a normal year when they're dancing through the streets and everything, you hear the music of specific dances and you know you want to go to the door and uh, maybe invite them in um, to, to come and dance at your house and then you feed them and you do other kinds of stuff like that. So lots of interesting things. So on Monday, that's tomorrow, um, I may be going along with a dance troupe on some door-to-door -door action. It depends on, uh, depends on what Martha's brother-in-law says the deal is. Llevaríamos, no sé, pero no vamos a ver contra danza si viene ahorita, ¿no? Entonces, depende de qué. Nada, nada, mejor llevamos pues y en otro momento regresamos para ver. So, uh, Martha's husband and daughter are going to come join us and then it's our turn to take beer to a cargo house. So, look at, the, look at these majeños uh, dancing their way out. They are. Anyway, we've got to we've got to go a couple places taking cases of beer. So we'll take you along with us to deliver beer. So now we're going to see the Tusu Warmi take the stage. is on the phone with Manuel and the discussion is where we have to buy the cases of beer to take to the cargo and where we're going to meet up. va a comprar
Uh, so we have no idea where the cargo is for this, but Manuel's going to call us and tell us where we're supposed to go. We're probably going to walk past several other parties as we go to it. So these are the Tusu Huarmi, the dancing women. They've got a, a cool dance. And uh, for those of you who enjoyed the whipping from the Cachampas at the beginning, you're going to see probably more of it now from the Tusu Huarmi, the dancing women. So lining up after this, we have the Negrillas. They are the uh, free black women, the uh, Afro-Peruvian women is who they represent. So it's starting to get windy. It's coming up on three o'clock. And uh, so that's about the time a wind really kicks up in Ollantaytambo. And um, this is one of the reasons why uh, there's food storage up on the mountains because uh, with the stiff wind in the afternoons, it keeps everything dry and cool and meant that grains and whatnot that were stored up on the mountain, like up there, those warehouses uh, were very functional, always very functional in Inca times. So drop us a comment uh, in the chat and let us know where you're watching from so we can give you
you a shout out. And uh, if you have questions, just ask them in the chat. I'll answer as, uh, as, as uh, I am able. So we are going to be hanging out here waiting. Marta and I are going to be hanging out here waiting uh, to hear what the plan is. I do want to show you this lady here carrying the case of beer on her back. Hello there in Prince George, British Columbia, Canada. So these are some folks in their regular work wear, day-to-day -day clothes. There's a police officer and a family and you can see that the costumes of the Tusu Huarmi are not wholly unlike um, the regular clothes. Um, Goyachas, when they come around, you'll see, look very much like uh, the folks in their regular attire here. We're discussing how many cases of beer we've got to buy. We have no idea how much a case of beer is right now because it's fiesta time, so it could be more, it could be less. Um, So it's like 70 to 80 soles, we think we're guessing for a case of beer right now. Um, and uh, so that divided by 3.7. That's a case of uh, that's a case of standard sized beers, which are uh, 630 milliliters. So when the wind picks up in the afternoon in Ollantaytambo, the temperature changes dramatically. And, and that's kind of why people are trying to get to the houses where they're going to be, where they are obligated to take beer for the party and that sort of thing sooner rather than later. 
because uh, you know carrying cases of beer in the cold well that's for later after you've had some beer but just think about the stamina it takes to dance like this uh, for four days and be in the band Yeah, let's see if I can zoom in. These ladies right in the middle uh, are wearing traditional clothes, and then the ladies with the glittery stuff behind them are not, and then the ladies who are dancing are wearing these stylized representations of traditional clothes. Uh, shout out, hello to Oregon, USA. And if you're enjoying watching this, you can feel free to share this link around to any of your friends who you think might enjoy it as well. I'm going to say the best bet for people who want to catch up on uh, where we are doing live stuff uh, this weekend and also tomorrow and Tuesday while the fiesta continues. Uh, the best bet is going to be to make sure that you are following my YouTube channel because it looks like, uh, for technical reasons, that is the... Um, that is the best way to get the info out there. If I've got to start a new stream and then reshare the link in a whole lot of places, it looks like that doesn't reliably, uh, it doesn't work as reliably as we might like, and sometimes we're having the problem with the black screen of death. So there are the, uh, the albaso, the, uh, the, um, the, the, the cannons, um, making lots of noise. For Senor de Choquequilca, the patron saint of Ollantaytambo, here being celebrated for the first time in three years, the last time everybody was able to come out for his, uh, his festivities was in 2019, so it has been three years since this fiesta took place. And it is on the small side in terms of who is here and who's populating the fiesta today, um, and this time through, uh, word was word just came down about a month ago that it was going to be possible to actually have the fiesta and the dances, but it's much limited from sort of the standard routine where normally all of the dancers would be going through the streets, um, dancing even more nonstop with their bands, whereas now they are really just dancing here on the plaza, presenting their dances to Señor de Choquequilca, the patron saint, who is a large stone cross who resides inside the church over there on the right-hand side. That's the door under that awning. Um, so yeah, you'll notice that the, the Tusu Huarmi, the dancing women, that is the name of this dance, uh, also have, um, they also have slings and ropes and whip each other with them. Um, they, are, they are tough customers. Getting ready down here, we have a negrilla. It's probably somebody's mom with her two kids and husband taking pictures. And, um, and that's who's on deck. They're getting ready and they represent the um, Afro-Peruvian women of Peru. So beer getting carried everywhere. Martha and I are up here on the balcony of a friend's restaurant. Trying to have a good view for watching all of this. We've got a pretty good spot. And so the Tusu Huarmi are number five of 20 dances. Um, Martha's son, my nephew, Piero, is in dance number eight. So we might not still be here watching that. We might have already had to shuffle along over to uh, uh, 
the house where the cargo is that we're going to. The dance of the Tsukwarmi is um, fairly standard, uh, what women dance like. Yep. But yes, Marta wanted to make sure that I pointed out that there is still that there is still whipping going on. The Tsukwarmi. Uh, they're another one of the groups. Yep. These are the these are the these are the women of the Gachampa crew, basically. Now just. As a point of random interest, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to show you up there in the fortress, in the archaeological site, the major lines of tourists. The other thing that's worth noting about what's going on here today, the other thing that's kind of interesting to note about all of this going on today is that uh, there are tour groups going to Machu Picchu, which should be normally going through Ollantay Tambo, but the way that the uh, the way that the companies that have the concessions to run that and the uh, foreign interests that are making most of the money off that operate, uh, those tourists aren't even coming through town and don't even know this is happening, and uh, so they're just getting a fairly standard boilerplate. Uh, push them through Machu Picchu as fast as you can experience and they're missing out on everything that's going on here with uh, with all of this so so yeah I went through a really interesting place on a tour and all of this was happening and my tour operator just put me through the formula trip. I would I would be bummed. Maybe that's just me. Let me know what you think. I'm keeping a good grip on my phone tripod today because yesterday a huge gust of wind came up and took my phone, tripod and all, over the balcony of a different place that we were. And it went you know, down, fell onto a small roof like that. Fortunately, it was completely undamaged. But yeah, so I, I would be, we have a comment, I would be big mad if all of this was going on. I'd be bummed too. It would be a bummer, right? Like all of this is happening and instead you just get taken on a boilerplate, totally bog standard uh, tour that could be happening anytime and you would miss this out. Like, yeah, like, what a bummer. What a bummer that would be. So fortunately you all know me instead of um, whatever random tour group type people or whatever it is that I am. Right. Uh, so you get to see this. We have a comment. Look at rocks or drink in a cultural experience. Um, yeah, right. Tough choice. Well, so one of the things that folks here who I work with have said about the groups that I bring when I'm able to bring them is that they really appreciate that I want people to get to know the people, not just the rocks. I want, I want people to have a chance to experience actually being in the Cusco area in Ollantaytambo, which uh, is the base of operations where we set up and we operate out of, and we go out on day trips to do everything that we do. And so when you come with me, you don't miss out on the cool stuff that's happening. And uh, yeah, so another person says, I would be super bummed, but then again, I'd be more inclined to research and see what's going on to see what sort of stuff I'd really want to see. But you might not know that this is happening. Uh, how would you research to know, 
you know, when is a patron saint day in a particular town and which ones are cool and a lot of that. It helps if you have somebody you can count on who can tell you when to do it. Um, in general, though, in most of Latin America, if a town has a patron saint, which it probably does, then on the feast day for that saint, there's going to be a big fiesta. Oh, we have another band coming in. I hear another band coming in from across the plaza. Who've we got coming in? Chilenos. Marta knows, she knows the music. It's the Chilenos. The Chilenos are the uh, Chilean soldiers. Um, the dance troupe representing Chilean soldiers. And Soldiers are not well loved in Peru. There's a rivalry between Peru and Chile over lots of stuff because there's been, you know, outright warfare over the years and all that. Um, uh, but yeah, so the, the Chilenos are, uh, in terms of what they represent, they represent the Chilean soldiers and uh, their shtick, sort of when it comes to interacting with the crowd and so forth is uh, clowned up hostility and aggression. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. But they're they're seen as very mean, very nasty, not good guys. So coming in over up at the top of the screen there you can see a group of uh, a group of cuckoos. They are bears. They are uh, they are a special mischievous character, and you see them in a lot of every dance group has some, um, pretty much. And they have specific functions that are ceremonial in nature in a variety of different contexts, a variety of different ways. Anyway, uh, do you think you could twirl your hips and move your waist that much, that long? So this is a. Uh, it's, it's no joke, so the Tusu Huarmi are pretty tough. And moving the skirt, it's important that you be able to move your pollera, your skirt, like that. And I think it's interesting, if you look, you can see a lot of uh, ladies walking around in their traditional attire, which uh, probably looks like dance costumes, if you don't know, that it's just what people wear. The Negrias have those noisemakers that sound kind of like a cash register.
see the phone shaking as the wind kicks up. I'll just uh, see it when I say the wind is kicking up. I mean the wind is kicking up. So do we have any other questions? Uh, feel free to ask questions as you're watching. Uh, I love questions. Looks like we're seeing the Negrias get up and get ready. And we are seeing the, um, we're seeing the Tusu Guarmi come off. So the gentleman carrying the, uh, the gentleman carrying the, uh, like picture frame there um, is the one who's got the uh, responsibility for uh, fronting this dance as it happens. And uh, it's usually a couple who, do, who will have it. It's usually, that's usually who does it. So they're done. And now we are gonna see the Negrias do their dance with their band. And so the Tusu Huarmi are done and they're gonna head back to the house where the cargo is for, for, for them. And they're all gonna, you know, do some eating and drinking and social dancing, uh, just regular dancing, you know, to kind of relax and rest up for the next time that they're on and dancing. Very popular dance troupe. I wonder what it must be like to be a tourist coming through who is walking through town and has absolutely no idea that this is going on or what it's all about. I just want to say, uh, under normal circumstances, the Negrias do that dance in those boots on cobblestones and whatnot. So, uh, you know, they are not to be trifled with. I'm just gonna, we just, we just need to see the wheelbarrow full of beer. It's four cases and then a fifth, and the dog is going along to help. And. Uh, coming up, there's a motocarga with cases of beer in it as well. And look, these folks are taking uh, are taking food that's going to get cooked as well. Here comes the motocarga full of beer. Yep. Anyway, it takes a lot of beer to make uh, proper respects to a patron saint. Andes, you don't want to disrespect your patron saint by being too sober.
So a lot of these dances are harder than you might think because, I mean, you're getting your skirt to flip just so at just the right time and that kind of thing. And that's harder to do than you might think. Tuzukwarmi dancing off. So check out the pro photographer there with her photo printer that she that she's carrying with her. So she'll take your picture, digital picture, send it to you, and also print you a picture there on the spot. And this is another hustle that people have around uh, the Cusco area sometimes. Otra danza ya está llegando. So you're the Chilean soldiers coming in. So the lady on the lower left is just in her regular clothes. And then we've got Chilenos who are there with their with their fancy boots and their beribboned hats and they are watching the Negrias dance.
¿Dónde estarán? Habrán salido ya de la casa, supongo. Pregunto. Ya salieron. ¿Qué casa crees que te traigan? <risa> Tendría que ser una grande. No una de... Una de mis polares, así que es grande. Para ti, también algo. ¿Ya salieron de la casa? ¿A dónde? Ajá. We're just checking to see if they've already left the house. ¿Ya salieron? Sí, ya salieron. So they're buying the beer and carrying it. Manuel and Jocelyn are buying the beer and beer and, and carrying it. And um, we are gonna uh, we are gonna be heading over to meet them soonish. Ahorita. So we're gonna go now apparently. All right. So just uh, I'm gonna shift camera. I'm gonna switch camera. And you can see Marta and I here on the balcony. And um, now we are <laughs> trying to stand up. And uh, we are, uh, I'll show you this awesome restaurant. This awesome restaurant it has some good weaving in it too. Uh, real quick, I'll show you the good weaving. Everybody wants to see the good weaving, right? Deer. Sí, es un koala. Koala parece, ¿no? Ajá, o un oso. Koala parece. Sí, ¿no? Parece. Bueno, koala es oso. So that's a koala, we think. So, no veo murciélago. Murciélago, elefante. Yeah. No, we don't have a bat, but we've got Leon. some elephants and lions. And... De nado. ¿Qué cosa no ves? Murciélago, murciélago. No hay murciélago en el No, we don't see a bad. We looked. But anyway, so just as we are on the way out. Ese es diferente. Yeah. No sé qué se toca. ¿Qué será? No será. Un loro tal vez, así que tiene. Pero mira. Pero está así curvas. We don't know what that is. Yeah, ahora vamos a la calle entonces. Yeah, so this is a this is a nice restaurant. We really we had a delicious chicken served on hot rocks with an excellent salad and all of that. And uh, I was all I was all wanting to have protein. The stairs are steep though. Ay, con cuidado voy a bajar. No, no voy. Yo no soy así tan dura como mi celular, eh. Yep. So the stairs up to the balcony are steep. Gracias, Rusmi. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Sí, hasta la próxima, pues. Hasta la próxima. Muchas gracias. So anyway, so here we are. Out here. And we're gonna... Yep. So we're gonna walk through the plaza and then we gotta go and meet Manuel and Jocelyn and a couple of cases of beer and go do some of the behind the scenes stuff. So see there's me and Marta. <laughs> Do 
here we are. Here we go. Martha's getting really good at like sneaking out of camera view. Anyway. Yeah. So we gotta go. We're gonna see more of these dances at other times of the day. Like I say, in a normal year, you couldn't walk through here. Be so crowded with people. But this year, not so much. So that mountain is the up of Luna, right there. And this emergency room is uh, our favorite clinic. It's got our regular doctor who we go to for everything. And we are going to walk along. When we are going over, we have been told to go over to near the uh, entrance to go up in Colina. So, vamos por Cariola, empezando. So, we're going to start, there's another ATM. We're going to start uh, going up Cariola, which we used to live on, up this street. So anyway, they are on dance number seven of 20. They're on the plaza right now. And we are walking up Calle Orno, past the fast food chicken place. That just had to come. Okay. The wind is kicking up. And uh, I guess we're going to step up into this doorway to let this motocarga and its noble charge of beer make its way out. So, a full-size car. Hi, Chicho. So those are cases of empties. Those are cases of empties being carried out. Yeah. We couldn't understand what it was saying. Vamos por acá o por allá. We're going to keep going up this way. Trying to shield the microphone from wind a little bit. Anyway, so yes, this is the street that I used to live on. Um, oh, hi, kitty. Será una de las hijas de Miski, seguro. Se parece. Miski was the mom to a lot of uh, the cats in this couple of block radius. So, but okay. so we're not going to go that way. We're going to go this way. Fully behind the scenes. Es el Rosa Calle. Ah, Rosa Calle. This is a. Uh, This is, you know, traditional Inca street. These are the streets and roofs that Miski, my cat, roamed with wild abandon until she decided to settle down with me. 
Y estos tipos, estos chiquitos. Guarmachas. And then we've got. We've got a tour group. So we got to make our way past these unmasked tourists. So Marta and I holding together. This is the entrance to Pinko Yuna. So we're carrying beer up these steps. Here's the entrance. Everybody's got to get a nap in. Anyway, so we're going to say goodbye for now. Martha and I are going to say goodbye for now. So that we can uh, have some beer and stuff. So we'll catch you later. Bye bye.